Hey guys, welcome back to another garden update. It's Saturday, August 17th. We've had a couple days of some pretty crazy weather. We had a lot of rain um, yesterday and then today we had quite a bit of fog this morning and then a beautiful afternoon. So the plants have had lots of water and lots of sunlight so they've really um, put on a lot of new growth. Uh, everything, all the fruits that have been set are quite a bit bigger now than they were uh, they were last week so let's have a quick look so the first bed of beets these are all ready to be harvested you can see they're not the biggest beets uh, just the variety isn't uh, they don't get all that large but they're a good size quite a few of them here so we will probably be um, pickling quite a number of these beets but yeah they'll come out in the next uh, in the next few days further down this bed we were gonna take this uh, this romaine plant out But we never really got around to it and the bugs kinda kinda got to it. So we figured we'd let it flower. Show you guys what uh, what a romaine plant looks like when it flowers. I actually have never seen a, a, the flower of a uh, of a romaine lettuce. And you can see the beets, good size, ready, ready to come out. Um, new lettuces have sprung up. These aren't ones that I've planted, but uh, I did sow a lot of seeds in the uh, in the original uh, small um, pods. So I guess those are just some more seeds that have germinated and uh, replaced what we ended up taking out. So I'm gonna let them grow, and you know, three or four more weeks, we have the weather for it. Um, we should be getting uh, more lettuces unexpectedly. Now again, these are the leftover squash plants. There's a, uh, one spaghetti squash here, one butternut squash. This is gonna be the year for squash. We have a ton of fruit set, just on this one plant. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six squashes just on this one plant alone. Uh, yes, and then that's the, the pepper plant that the that the deer took out. Sorry, seven. There's seven squash on that one plant. And then on the butternuts, there's a butternut set. Probably a few more on the way, so it's definitely going to be a terrific year for squash plants. On the tomatoes, I'm not exactly sure what's what's going on. They look okay. A couple of the plants, this plant in particular, looks like it's something hit it, something got it. Same with this plant. Something. Uh, Something has affected them. It seems to have been since the deer came and uh, and ripped off all the uh, or a lot of the unripe tomatoes. Uh, they seem to have been uh, they seem to be losing steam. So it's not going to be the best tomato harvest this year, but st some of them are starting to ripen up, as you can see. Quite a few of them. I'm going to take off all these. Uh, snip off all these dead leaves they're not doing anything anyways so clean up the bottom of the plants um, we'll see what we get still quite a bit of fruit coming on these back uh, these back few plants um, so should be an okay harvest not as good as other years but uh, should be all right I am finally getting around to mulching the uh, cherry plants that I put in chopped a few trees down so we uh, chip the branches and we'll be covering this. Hopefully these plants make it. Again, they were 
chewed on by the deer so hopefully they uh they survive till next year they should they look like they'll be okay uh again i'm gonna put some fencing up around this similar to what i have around the blueberries uh, because can't leave anything out in the open here the deer will the deer are very opportunistic they take advantage of any plants that are out in the open the beans the pole beans are now starting to produce again I took the peas out a couple weeks ago and have put that bed away for the winter that's how it'll stay till till next year give it works well give it a quick turnover and then plant not too much uh, not too much weeding to do but the beans have started to produce green beans coming lagging a little bit behind the yellow beans we have already picked these a few times um, but again they uh, they need to be picked again <laughs> whatever we don't use again blanch and freeze them these freeze very well um, from year to year the yellow ones are really putting out a ton of fruit so we come through and uh, and pick those ones but again they've caught up and are producing now this bed of broccoli we've harvested all of them I did we ate most of them blanched and froze a couple bags those are all done again Brussels sprouts still growing away don't plan on seeing anything out of this bed until uh, late September on the other side of the garden most of the red onions have fallen over I'm gonna wait until probably another week and then I'll pull them out of the ground and dry them um, when the uh, when the stalks fall over the leaves are still are still green they're still uh, the bulbs are still putting on weight once the leaves start showing signs of dying back then I'll pull them out and uh, and dry them leave them out dry them for for a week and then uh, put them in the storage second round of beets need to be weeded but overall doing well a few more lettuces there that are growing up should be ready in a couple weeks and again kale and swiss are all looking good nothing much happening here we just again steadily take them and they keep producing now the strawberry bed still doing well still putting out tons of berries you can see the flowers are still coming on a lot of the plants and at the end of this bed those are the few pepper plants that I had that survived the frost they are now putting on lots of new growth have lots of flowers out so we should get quite a few peppers still from uh, from those plants that survived that early or that late frost back in June further down this bed these cauliflowers started to produce some heads on them I did notice got a little a little sloppy putting my my netting on and we do seem to have some caterpillars on the cabbages hopefully we get something out of them but again they're they're pretty ruthless next year one of the things I do have to do is make sure that the broccoli plants that I have are in the the higher tunnels uh, this bed for whatever reason um, my tunnels are a little bit lower um, so the plan next year is to have this side available for uh, my strawberry runners and then all my cabbages and cauliflowers will be in my higher tunnel so I can keep them keep them covered if it's not the deer it's the bugs you really there's not much you can do about it <laughs> In this last big bed, holy man, <laughs> again, squash plants going crazy, 
cucumbers are starting to produce and starting to crawl up the trellis. This is another thing that is going to change. Probably put the cucumbers in the beds, in the smaller, narrower beds, just so we can have easy access and pick the uh, pick the cucumbers. I believe there is one hanging down. I don't know if I can capture it. There it is. Hopefully we can. There it is, hanging down off the trellis. Um, so again, next year, I may actually build another one of these, and then place it in the, the four foot wide bed, and then underneath we'll plant something that, probably uh, lettuces and things like that, underneath on the, uh, on the back side of it. But again, this is gonna be the year for squashes. There are too many spaghetti squash to count on this side of the bed. There are baby ones here that are new and just starting to form. There are more mature ones here. That thing is just enormous. That's probably the biggest spaghetti squash I've ever seen. Still not, still not done. Compress your nail into the skin and it leaves a mark. They're not, they're not ready to be harvested yet. Uh, the baby one there. Everywhere you look on this bed, there are either giant spaghetti squashes or baby spaghetti squashes just starting to form. If I take a peek in there, and probably there's one there. Another enormous one there. That one's massive. And they're hanging off even the uh, even hanging off the fence. So again, this is gonna be the year for squashes. Coming around to the blueberry plants. They are starting to ripen up. The kids really love these plants. They come through just about every day and see what what uh, new blueberries there are to to pick. I have to mulch, put a little few more bags of wood chips down here. Got lots more leaves to chip, or uh, lots more branches to chip, so I'll be adding more wood chips to this bed, clean out the weeds. Again, there are two varieties. Cherokee and Nova. We can pick a couple berries that are ready on these ones. Quite a big difference. Again, they do suggest you have two different varieties of blueberries. Again, the Nova are the larger berries. Or sorry, not Nova, that's raspberries, Polaris. Polaris are the two larger blueberries. And then Cherokee are the smaller ones. They all taste really, really good. Very, very sweet. And again, if you can get them to work, if they like, they seem to like this uh, this soil that I have. Um, and if you can get them to work, they're a fantastic plant to, uh, to have around. Just fence them off. The deer will eat all the new growth. The deer will nip all this new growth off and you'll have nothing for the um, for the plants to grow up. Since I've had this netting up, keep the deer away, these plants have put on a ton of new growth and really looking forward to the amount of blueberries I can get out of here next year. Should be, uh, should be a good harvest. And last but not least, the raspberry bushes. Now, I didn't really hold out much hope for these bushes producing last year because I didn't see many new canes that came up the uh, previous year. But I have been surprisingly mistaken. These bushes are absolutely loaded with berries this year. You can see, there are just tons of them. Everywhere you look, we've been pulling pails of raspberries out of this, out of this bush. And it's been about three or four days since we've, since we've picked. And you can see everywhere you look, it's just loaded with berries. The Boyne berries here doing really well. 
for this variety these are enormous berries and then the tulum berries again these are the ones that are noticeably sweeter and have a much milder flavor they look very similar but you can see the boin are, a lot, are rounded whereas tulemen are a lot more let's call it cone shaped canonical in shape uh, and you can't miss the the difference in flavor but I'm gonna pick these now because odds are if I leave these on here the birds the deer or in a worst case scenario the bears will come through and uh, and do the picking for me but you can see as well as all the existing berries that are here right now tons of new growth which is really surprising lots of new growth compared to last year um, and even on this side lots and lots of new canes coming up so as well as quite an outstanding harvest this year we should get another blockbuster harvest uh, I don't know if that's the right word but we should get another terrific harvest uh, next year so again I'm gonna take these berries off um, so no other critters come and get them before before I do Okay, there we go. A little impromptu raspberry pick, but like I said before, when you when you see the berries, if they're ripe, if you don't get them, another animal or something else will. Um, normally when I pick raspberries, I'm not wearing shorts. Remember that raspberry bushes have thorns on them, and they seem to be home to a ton of insects. I don't know what it is with these, but the insects absolutely love hanging out in there. So, um, yeah. Long pants are definitely in order. That's what we got. Quick pick, about half of a Tupperware container full. Um, we'll eat them. We've been pulling containers like this every three or four days. Um, remember when you're harvesting raspberries, if they slide off easily, then they're done. If you have a little bit of resistance, then just leave them for next time. Huge berries this time on the, on the Tulemans. Really happy with that. Um, so, should uh, have a good raspberry uh, raspberry feast. That's about it for this week. So, till next week. See you later.